let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, we're going to look at verse 17, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the title of the message is, Are You Living by Faith? Are You Living by Faith? Are You Living by Faith? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Are you living by faith? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Brother Jake, can you please pray for the message? Yes, Christ, we thank you first of all for, for saving our soul from hell with your precious blood. And thank you for this Bible in church where we can gather together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. We ask you, Lord God, that you would fill each and every one of us with the Holy Spirit, especially the pastor. Pray that you'll fill him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give him the words that you want him to preach unto us. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us be convicted yes. and help us to change Amen. and be a better Christian for you. We ask you that you'll protect us from devil's attacks. <coughs> Help us to just wholly give ourselves unto you, to this preaching, and not to think about anything that's happening outside or inside in our lives. We ask you that you receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, living by faith is a very simple term, and term that we use very loosely. If you were to ask you know, any churchgoer, they say, I go to church because of faith. If you were to ask any missionary, they do things because of faith. If you are here today, you're here hopefully because of faith. But contrary to the biblical faith, many people do not practice faith, the right faith. And right faith, if you are practicing it, if you're living by faith, you will have fruits and ye shall know them by their fruits, the Bible says. And if you do not have the fruit of the Spirit, which is in Galatians 5.22, and I wouldn't say you're living by faith. There's no joy, there's like no long-suffering, there's no temperance, and all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Many people think that if you just go to church, you're a Christian. And that's why many people will be burning in hell. Yes. Just because you go to church doesn't mean that you go to heaven. And a lot of unbelievers have a wrong idea of Christianity. I don't know about you, but if you talk to people, many people think that, oh, you go to church, then you must be a Christian. And it's not even a just Bible-believing Christian. Any so-called you know, religious congregation or temple or building that you go to, they automatically think you're a Christian. They think all the Catholics are Christians. Right. They think all the Methodists, they think Presbyterian, you know, they think Mormons, they right. think Jehovah's Witness, they think everybody's a Christian who goes to so-called church. But they're not, right? Mm -hmm. You become Christian by being in Christ, Amen. by trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And the Bible clearly says, faith, in Romans 10, 17, cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You receive faith through the word of God. You get saved through the word of God. You don't get saved because you see in a dream that Jesus says you're saved. Yeah. You're my child. You know, you've been chosen to be my Messiah. The devil. Many calls out there proclaim and use their visions and their fantasy to tell others that I saw Jesus and he told me that I'm saved. You know, many religious people that we've talked to throughout many years of ministry, suddenly if you ask them, how do you know you're saved? Because one day I woke up and the world seemed different. I was nicer to my wife. I was nicer to my husband. And my children looked like angels, you know. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes... And I used to think about bad things, but now I only want to think about good things. 
and they think that they're saved. They think they're born again. You ask people simple question. Are you a born again Christian? Because it's used by everybody. It's used by, I mean, it's such a loosely used term. People don't know what they're talking about. Everybody says, you know, they go to prison and suddenly they come out. All these celebrities and athletes, they say, I'm a born again Christian. I mean, do they even know what they're talking about? No. I mean, what is born again Christian? I mean, simply put, born again Christian is your death spirit is alive again by trusting the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away your sins and you receive as your Lord and Savior. So you're born again from devil's spiritual family into God's spiritual family. Amen. You can go look at it. You know, John 1, 12 says, but as many as received him, who? Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. To them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So you have to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your spirit is alive again. So people just throw out terms out there. That's why people have a hard time living by faith because they're listening to all these false teachings and false doctrines and false experiences and they don't really know what it is to live by faith. If you as a Christian, if someone were to ask you, what does it mean to live by faith? What are you going to say, right? Because some people will give probably generic answer and some people will say some more specific answer. So we're going to look at those things today. You know, the simply put, you know, living by faith is just trusting in God and obeying his word. That's it. That's what living by faith is. Trusting God in everything, all parts of your life, and obeying the word of God. Amen. That's why, why is it so important in Romans 10, 17? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your faith will not grow. You cannot live by faith without the Word of God. Which means if you don't have much Word of God in you, after you've gotten saved, you can't live by faith. Simple as that. If you don't study the Word of God, you're not living by faith. If you don't meditate in the Word of God, you're not living by faith. If Word of God is not in your life 24-7, that parts of 24-7 that you don't have Word of God in you, then you're not living by faith. If you live by faith, you're going to obey God. Simple as that. I mean, if you don't live by faith, then what's the opposite? You're going to disobey God. Your faith is not determined by signs and wonders. Amen. If Before I became a Bible-believing Christian, I thought, you know, speaking in tongue was something special. Even though it looked ridiculous, right? Yes. People like repeating things in gibberish. Right. You know, certain church churches teach people how to speaking in tongues. How do you do it? You know, first say hallelujah, right? And say hallelujah super fast. Say hallelujah five times, hallelujah, hallelujah, and then you go faster, as fast as you can until you you, you know. It's hard to breathe, right? La, 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 la. And then you su suddenly a eh, speaking in tongue. If you want to, you know, jokingly, if you if you like meet somebody who's like a faith healer and stuff, you tell them, hey, I'm better than you because I'm speaking in tongue better than you. Guys okay, speak faster, you know, hallelujah, la, 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 la. And, and because they don't have right doctrine, they're going to be like, wow, you know, you're filled with the spirit. You know, yeah. you should come to our church, be a, you know, special speaker. Maybe you even could heal people, right? And all those things are gone in church age, right? right? Yes. God could do it. But after Bible's completed, that's not how God works in this church age. Amen. Everything works by the word of God. Yes. Back in, and then first of all, you know, signs were given to Jewish people. Yes. Yeah, you're not a Jew, Amen. right? You know what? I'm Jew, though, yeah. because my last name is Jew. So I'm physical Jew and special Jew with a special you know, last name. So I could, I mean, when we're witnessing one time, I actually used it, you know. I'm a Jew just like you. It was a Jewish woman came out of the door, you know. Like, are you? You know, like, yeah, my last name is Jew. Like, so, but... Aside from it, you have to understand, you do not get saved. Your faith does not come 
from feelings, speaking in tongues, visions, illusions. I mean, some religions out there see the cloud and they see shape of somebody. They're like, oh man, that's a sign from God. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm specially blessed that I'm saved, right? We have, you know, religion out there where billions of people follow. When the shape of rock looks like Jesus Christ, shape of rock looks like Mary, they think that's a sign from God. You know, I could create it. I mean, you guys could create it. Yes. It's just an idol. They're just serving an idol. That's why gospel is hindered. There's a block. That's why gospel, people reject the gospel. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. The simple gospel that Jesus Christ came down from heaven, died for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, was there buried and rose again. You just have to trust him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Nothing more. That is being blocked. And that, there's a huge obstacle in between. Because why? People have a wrong idea of living by faith. People have wrong idea of receiving faith. People have wrong idea of how to practice faith. People have wrong idea how to walk by faith. Then let's, you know, go into more detail. Why, what are some of the reasons why people cannot live by faith? I mean, first one is very simple because you don't believe the word of God. That's why you can't live by faith. Simple as that. When you question the word of God, when you don't believe the word of God 100%, then you can't live by faith. Faith is trusting Something that you can't see wholeheartedly, you know. However, if you can't trust that thing or person, then there's no faith in that person. It's almost like you are talking to someone who's never gotten good grades because they've been lazy all their life. Failed every exam. And suddenly that person comes to you, you know what? I'm going to get A tomorrow. You know, first reaction would be what? I don't think so. You know, based on the history, I mean, I doubt it. If that's your child, if that's your son or daughter, you try to believe it, right? But, you know, you probably have certain part of you, you know, you have like a kind of a questioning spirit, right? Yes. My son, you know, daughter, <laughs> I've seen you, I've seen how you study, you know. But I, I'm going to believe you, you know. I, I think you could do it. But there's always a part of you who doesn't trust. If you don't trust wholeheartedly the Word of God, you can't even get saved. Simple as that. How are you going to get saved if you don't trust and believe the Word of God? That's why many false religious people out there they proclaim to believe Jesus Christ, but they don't get saved. Right. What does that mean? They don't believe He's God, creator of the universe. Yes. We have many religions out there who deny the deity of Jesus Christ. True. They say, I believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I believe every word. Then why do we have so many Bible versions out there? Because they don't believe every word of God. I mean... If you don't believe that Jesus is God, how are you going to get saved? Right. right? And obviously, they're subject of hell. Yes. I mean, hell's real. Amen. It's not your grave. It's not a separation from God. I mean, partly true, but a separation for, from God eternally in lake of fire, right. burning forever and ever. Yes. That's why you can't live by faith. That's why people who don't get saved, they can never say, I live by faith. You don't believe in the fundamental doc doctrines in the Word of God. Right. And for some Christians, even though you're saved, you can't live by faith because you don't believe the Word of God and you don't follow the Word of God. What does that mean? You're that person, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 6, where the Bible says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. But even as a saved Christian, your faith is dependent upon your sight. You have to see it to believe. Right? 
You're struggling health-wise. You're struggling financial. You're struggling relationship. You're struggling mentally, emotionally. Instead of having faith in the Lord that because he said he's going to take care of you, provide all your need, and he promised that. But no, you have to question him. You can't trust him 100% until that thing happens. Then how do you call that a faith? I mean, there's no faith in that. Mm -hmm. Faith requires you to follow without seeing. Amen. If you say, you know what, I'm only going to believe it if I were to see. It's like someone telling you, show me Jesus. Then I'll believe him. I mean, during the days of Jesus Christ, they saw him perform miracles. They still didn't believe him. Yeah. I mean, you see Jesus Christ right now, you still won't believe him. Yeah. I mean, there's no, you know, point. There's already word of God Amen. as a proof. I mean, I, I don't have to go into it. There's, you know, 800 prophecies, 300 that are already fulfilled. There's got 500 going to be fulfilled, you know. There's 48 about a single person, Jesus Christ, that was fulfilled. I mean, there's no possibility in the world that could even, I mean, come up with a scientific reason how that's possible. It's impossible. Why? Because it's the Word of God. Amen. I mean, God is God of impo impossible, right? Yes. And instead of trusting the Word of God and, you know, following, what do people do? They're looking things again. They want to see, and also they want to feel. Yes. You know, fact is most important. Amen. And fact is our King James Bible. Amen. That's it. Amen. You can't be relying on your feelings. Why? Because devil can ruin your day. Right? And are you going to say, ah, you know. I had a very emotional day today. So I'm done. I'm not going to live by faith today. I mean. Bible says God has given you comforter when you trust that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Then Holy Spirit will give you comfort. Yes. Whether you're going through hardship, trial, sickness, God said he'll give you comfort. Amen. And you have an eternal comfort of going to heaven once and for all. Thank you, Lord. And you could have eternal joy that you don't have to burn in hell. Yes. And obviously, if you're not living by faith, you are that person who's always cranky, who's always bitter. I mean, I mind you, if you're a bitter person and cranky person, right? If you're a very, very moody person, you don't really live by faith. Person who lives by faith, find joy, right? True. Yeah, joy. In any situation, you're going to find joy. Why? Because everything is allowed by God whether it's good or bad, Amen. right? If you're going through trials and hardship, you yes. should still thank God and be happy. Amen. You should be faithful. Why? Because God allowed it to happen. You know, there's a chick comic. I forget the title. And there's two gentlemen, you know, you know fighting against, you know, evil people. And they say, you know, I'm going to kill you and stuff. And the guy answered, hey, you can't kill me unless you get permission from Unless your father gets permission from my father. Oh, yeah. yeah. So your father's the devil, you know, according to John 8, 44. But my father is God. Yeah. But who does your father answer to? That's God, my God, Amen. my father. Yeah. So you can't touch me unless your father gets permission from my father. I mean, that's faith, right? Yes. You know? So whatever is happening in your life, just remember, I mean, if you are a child of God, He's going to do what's most best for you. And going through trials is best for you. It's best for you. Amen. Instead of trying to avoid trials and tribulations, instead of trying to avoid hardship, you have to trust him on a daily basis so that you could go through it on a daily basis. When it comes to trials and tribulations, you shouldn't have like such a far view except for the fact that you're going to be in heaven one day and all these troubles and hardships will be gone once Woo! and for all. But however, for now, you have to see nearsighted. What does that mean? You have to go day by day. You have to trust him day by day. 
And I know one thing that Christians don't do, because I'm at fault, you know. When you wake up each day, I know many of you do pray, right? But what are you praying about? I mean, do you pray that you could live by faith throughout the day? Or do you just pray for things that you want that day? Your physical needs, you know, whatever your emotional needs are, right? Lord, today, give me a good day at work. I don't want to fight with my family. Give me good food, you know. Help me to have a good day, right? I'm sure those are some of the prayers that you do. But do you ever pray to the Lord when you wake up, when you're on your knees and praying, Lord, please, you know, rule my thoughts so that I'll only think what you want me to think today. Because you need God's wisdom Amen. to survive in this wicked world. Yes. You need God's wisdom when the whole world is going upside down and hating on you because you're a Christian. Yes. Especially if you are Bible-believing Christian, they're going to hate you more. Because those liberal, you know, watered-down, Laodicean, those Christians are going to hate you. I mean, they don't know anything about the Word of God. All they know is, you know, wave their hand up in the air. And just try to do, you know, sing and praise all the time, worship and praise. And they don't know those fundamentally. They don't know the deep doctrines. And then you bring up, you know, some deep doctrine. They say, oh, you're a cult. I mean, you're just dumb. Amen. I mean, you don't study the word of God. Yes. It's almost like a person who can't win an argument. A lot of liberals out there. They just raise their voice and start fighting. You know, you've seen some, you know, a lot of debates out there, they can't prove anything. So they just start crying and yell and scream at you. But spiritually, you and I become like that when our thoughts are not governed by the Word of God, when our thoughts are not aligned with God's thoughts. What does it mean to live godly? Right? Living godly means to have your thoughts and actions align with God's thoughts and actions. Amen. And how does that work? Through the Word of God. Amen. That's why if you haven't been studying the Word of God, if you haven't been reading the Word of God, if you haven't been serious about the Word of God, forget about living by faith. There's so much you could do. It's like a child who's trying to solve calculus problem. And he's in, you know, he only learned subtraction and addition barely right now. And he's trying to solve this calculus problem, you know. I mean, I don't even know what's the example of calculus problem, right? I know, like, some signs, cosines, linear, some stuff out there. Then that child's going to fail. Yes. He doesn't know what to do. You, as a Christian, if you want to live by faith and make it a, you know, part of your life where you walk by faith, not by sight, you have to grow in the Word of God. Let's turn to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Many Christians, especially Bible believing Christians, do have you know, zeal and right heart to serve the Lord. But you can't stop there. You have to put it into action, especially when it comes to the Word of God. You want to live by faith? Have more word of God in you. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3. Let's get verse 18. The last verse. The Bible says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> so how are you going to grow in grace? It's connected with the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How is your knowledge of Jesus Christ going to grow without the Word of God? And after you get saved, you as a Christian have duty to do certain things. I mean, you can't just be a, how should I say, safe but unprofitable Christian. And that's not what you are saved for. You are saved from hell to Give glory to God. I mean, that's your job and duty. Let's go to, in the same chapter, 1 Peter. Let's look at verse 5. 
2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And beside this, right? So, I mean, you're saved. Beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've gotten saved. Now, we have certain things that you have to grow. Virtue. You've got to have a morale and standard. No Bible moral and standard. You have to be firm in your final authority. No matter what happens, this is it. People say stand by your virtue, right? What does that mean? Your set of morals and standards. Is that the word of God? Is that your moral and standard? It should be. It shouldn't be your mom or dad because they're only human beings. It shouldn't be the government. God forbid, right? Yes. Especially this government. Or every government right nowadays, municipalities, especially not this state, right? You can't trust media and things out there. Amen. Your virtue will stand upon, and you should stand upon the word of God. And then what happens? You know, virtue to knowledge, right? If you already have that moral standard, now your knowledge has to grow. Which knowledge? The word of God. You have to. I mean, it's already... Almost November, right? How much Bible study have you done this year? How much Bible reading have you done this year? You know, when it comes to duties as a Christian, you know, when you see, you know, parables that Jesus Christ told, you know, someone just kept it, right? What the Lord gave, and then they didn't do anything, and then showed it. And did the Lord say, oh, yeah, you know, you've done a good job? No, the Lord took it away. Give it to the person who bear more fruit. Same thing. After you've gotten saved, there's a minimum thing that you are supposed to do. Lord has given you the word of God. Lord has given you local church to serve in. Lord has given you, you know, opportunity to pray and stuff. That's just given. But you've got to go above and beyond as a Christian. If you're going to live by faith, that means that's a, something you have to do more and more. You've got to put your neck out there for Jesus Christ then you are going to grow in faith. When was the last time you stood for Jesus Christ against all the hostility around you, against the positions, against the, you know, the devils of the world, right? Against the worldly people out there. I mean, that's what we're doing when we're out there street preaching, right? Yes. Everybody's against the pure word of God. Everybody's against Jesus Christ, this world. But you're preaching to them, he's the savior. You're preaching that he's the only one who can save you from hell. Amen. I mean, that's how you grow. Public ministry is needed and necessary. And thank God that we still can do it freely in this country. Yeah. Then you have to do it, right? And so on and so on, and knowledge to temperance, pa temperance, patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. So if you want to get to charity, honestly, you know, like 1 Corinthians 13, you say, you know, I want to show charity, charity, charity. You know, stop talking. You have to do this. You can't truly love your wife and husband unless your knowledge grows in the word of God. I tell you that. Amen. Because you don't know how to act in certain situations. You know, you're full of anger and you think you're right. And you know that your wife or your husband did wrong. But you got to show some compassion. Lord showed compassion to his disciples and people yes. who was just following him. Why? He knew they were wrong, but he had compassion on them. Man, those things you only learn and grow first getting knowledge from the word of God. But be careful with knowledge, though. Knowledge puffs up. Yeah. That's why virtue has to be there before knowledge. You have to have a moral standard where you're going to stay humble no matter what. That's what Bible says. Humble yourself, right? Yeah. You have to. you got to make sure that knowledge that I gain will not pollute me to look down on people. Amen. A lot of people who say I live by faith, they're so haughty. Right. Because they have a lot of knowledge. I'm not denying that. But that knowledge has caused them to become a haughty, proud person. That's why they can't really live by faith. They know the word of God inside out. You know, Dr. Okerman and a couple of professors, 
you know, Greek and Hebrew, I mean, they're very, very smart. I mean, one person, the, I mean, rewrote and fluently speak like eight languages. Some person like memorized the whole Greek characters. I don't even know some other stuff. So very smart people, but they never led a soul to the Lord. All they have is knowledge. They don't do anything else. Yeah. I mean, when you're living by faith, people will get saved through your life, Amen. whether you know it or not. You know, some you know because you're actually witnessing to them. Some you don't know because they see how you live. And they come to knowledge of truth. And they get saved somehow. For example, you know, we pass out tracts and then we leave it everywhere, right? Yeah. And I even tell people, like, if we drop somewhere on the street sidewalk, just leave it. If, if you know, some people are cleaning up, they're going to pick it up. They're going to see what it is. Yes. They might read it. Some people just walking by, they might see it, right? So, you know, as long as it's not creating such a bad clutter, you know, like pollution or something, you know, just leave it. Someone's going to read it. And then someday they're going to be like, hey, you know, I saw it. In your lifetime, it could be, or it could be after lifetime, right? Because you had that virtue, because your knowledge grew, and the rest of the things, you had self-control, temperance, right? You know, all these things. And then, what? You have patience, and you have godliness, brotherly kindness, right? They're like, how come I don't love my brother and sister in Christ like I should? Because you don't read the word of God. Because you don't have good virtue. Simple as that. You have no self-control. So you can't get to brotherly kindness. You can't get to charity where you have to sacrifice. You don't know how to sacrifice unless you know about Jesus Christ. He sacrificed himself. He sacrificed everything. Yes. Every last drop of blood. And we're talking about God himself who did that. Thank you, Lord. It's like this. It doesn't even compare, but it's like this. You give up your life for a little ant. Forget about ant. You know, ants are, I think, okay because they're hardworking, you know, creatures. You give up your life to cockroaches out there, <laughs> right? Big cockroaches, which I do not like, you know. I mean, and if you're from the south, big cockroaches that fly. Right? And sticks to you on a very hot, sweaty, humid day. <laughs> Think about it. You don't want to be with it. You don't want to near, be nearby. You don't even want to see it. No, sir. You don't even want to hear it. Right? Imagine if someone told you, right? Hey, die for the cockroach. Would you do it? I would do it. I'm yeah. sorry. You know? No, sir. I mean, that's a small sample comparison, but Lord Jesus Christ, who is God himself, died for you and me, Amen. who's like a cockroach creature, or even probably less than cockroach. What's less than cockroach out there? Some germs and bacterias out there, yes. right? You know, unseen bacteria, you know, who lives in like fish something and then kills people, you know, go to the brain and stuff. We're like that kind of creature. Yes. But Lord Jesus Christ died for us like that. Amen. Then if you, if you know that Lord Jesus Christ, you can't get proud and you can't be haughty. Especially if you want to be like Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to follow, and like if you want to conform to him, right? Yes. How are you going to be so haughty just because you know maybe one verse more than the other person? Because you know one doctrine more than the other person, right? Because you know King James 5 and they don't know it, so you look down on them? You know, that those are the mindset that Christians have to change, get right with the Lord. Amen. That's why people can live by faith, because they don't believe the word of God wholeheartedly. They question it because they don't study it. They don't meditate on it. That's why one of the solutions is like, regarding this matter is what? You have to start your day, ask the Lord to be the ruler of your thoughts. Amen. You know, trust in the Lord. You have to acknowledge Him in all your ways, right? Yes. You have to make sure that Lord gives you wisdom for all the actions that you're gonna take on a daily day. I mean, day, I mean on each day. Amen. Like today, if you didn't get up and pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to give you wisdom and rule over every thought of your, you know, 
being. Guarantee certain things you've already done, you probably aren't too proud about. I mean, I admit, man, I mean, when driving, it kind of makes you really become a different person. I mean, they drive so slow and suddenly they drive fast, you know. They just cut you off, right, and all those things. I mean, obviously, that's devil trying to have your bad day right away, right off the bat. Certain things shouldn't bother you, right? I mean, if you're going to let every single thing that happened in your life bother you and influence you, then you're going to be like those influence out there where they have to see every comment and their life depends on every comment. <laughs> and then they, they have a, like a best day if they only see good comments. If they see some bad comments, they're like crying all day, you know, complaining about the whole world. They will not live anymore. And then suddenly, you know, this up and down. You know, our Christian, we have to be balanced and we have to be as calm as possible, patient as possible. Yes. Because even when those, you know, annoying things, you know, when you feel like you've been wrong, things do happen, you can't follow your feelings. You got to follow fact. You got to follow the word of God. What are you going to do if someone wrongs you, but it's not really going to hurt you, right? And you haven't been hurt. I mean, if it's something that needs to be dealt with law, you deal with it. But you know, personal emotional feelings, like you feel like, oh, someone looked at me the wrong way. Are you gonna you know, really, really make that ruin your day? Whether it's at church, whether it's at work, whether it's at school, you're gonna be like, hey, that girl looked me the wrong way today. That boy ruined me, I mean, they, you know, I mean, don't let those things you know, ruin your day and ruin your faith on a daily basis. You have to have that one single standard that's Lord Jesus Christ. And the word of God says, be joyful always, right? Then you be joyful no matter what. Yeah, you look at me that way, I don't care, you know. I have joy of the Lord in my heart. I have the word of God. You know, I'm just full of, you know, happiness because, you know, I'm going to heaven no matter what. I mean, literally, no matter how you look at me, no matter what you tell me, you know, like sometimes we get little bit of persecution. It's not even a persecution, right? Sometimes, you know, someone cusses at you, you know, when you're preaching or something. It shouldn't bother you, right? You know, the Bible says, you know, all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution anyways. You know, you should give God the glory. And another reason why people, you know, don't live by faith, when you're not pure, what does that mean? Amen. When you don't have pure mind, you can't live by faith. When you have ulterior motive, you can never live by faith. Lord, I do this for you. Have you ever said that? Have you heard people? I do this for you, Lord. I go out to street preaching for you. I witness for you. So, you know, something's going to come back, Right? You know, I'm struggling financially. I'm reading your Bible left and right. You know, you shouldn't continue more, right? Or, you know, I have some personal issues. And then you don't even think about, you know, Romans 8, 28, right? You don't even think about all the suffering and the trials as a Christian you're supposed to go through. And then what happens? You become that person where... You only apply certain Bible verses to you. You're no better than calls out there. Yeah. That's right. You don't apply every word of God. That's right. right? It's like, oh, Lord, you said abstain from all appearance of evil. Not today. <laughs> you know, I, I got to go and, you know, make some money at the casino so that I could give more to money to the church. <laughs> right? You're like, ah. Be not unequally yoked together, unbeliever. Oh, no, not today, Lord. And right I have to be yoked together so that I could witness to them. <laughs> right? It's like the worst thing, worst testimony. Yeah. yeah. It's like your company has a function. Lord, I have to drink with them so that they, I become trustworthy. You know, I become one of the guys, one of the girls, right? I have to join their gossip, you know, talking about certain people. 
at work so that they'll trust me, so that when I witness to them, they'll have open heart. No. They already see you. You're a hypocrite. Yes. They see you as one of them, not one of Jesus Christ. Right? So if you do not have pure heart with the word of God and serving the Lord, then you can't live by faith. Because your carnal, your old nature, your flesh will always take over. And what does that lead to? Love of the world and love of the money. That's it. Root of all evil is what? Love of money. We didn't say root of all evil is money, right? You do need money to survive. But once you start loving it, you will start compromise. You compromise with the word of God. Yeah. And you're going to compromise your faith. Then there's no way you could live by faith. And another reason why you can't live by faith nowadays, because of, you know, outside influences. That's it. What does that mean, right? When things don't work out your own way because of outside influences, you can't live by faith. What does that mean? When you fail, you blame everything on everyone else. Then you can't live by faith. Man, I didn't get the job because my wife didn't give me that food. You know? I didn't do good on the interview. I didn't get the job you know, because my husband's always cranky. You know? right? I didn't get into that school as a child because my parents didn't take me to this you know, elite summer program. Right? Like, I didn't get to marry that person because, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, my marriage fell apart because of, you know, the church, because of the faith, you know. Stop blaming everything yeah. on other people, other influences. Then you will never live by faith. Sometimes you got to take accountability. Right. You know, many Christians, they never take accountability as they grow up. It's like, you've done wrong? Just say you've done wrong. Yeah. How hard is it to admit it? But that's the hardest thing. Because you have your own reputation. You have your own face to save, right? And yeah, on the ground, you look like a dirt. Once you get into the ground, you're not pretty. You're not handsome. You're just the flesh that's being eaten by worms, right? Amen. Turning to dust. Why do Christians think they're something when they're less than nothing? Yes. You know, it's almost like a theme. I think the Lord wants to get a hold of us, right? Yes. Don't think you're something, right? Like you're, you're like nothing, you're less than nothing. Yes. I'm not saying that you shouldn't present yourself worthy to the Lord, right? Or, you know, appropriately, right? right? Don't start coming next week like, oh, yeah, you know, you told me I'm nothing, so I'm going to just come. I'm not going to wash up for a whole week, you know. I'm going to just wear, you know, shorts and all that stuff, you know. All that, you know. We're not talking about that. You do your best. You dress your best for the Lord. Amen. But when it comes to things that's happening in your life, your faith shouldn't be influenced by what's happening outside. It should always be you. Yes. Whether it's good faith, bad faith, it should be you. Yes. You had a bad day? It's you. Amen. Don't blame it on your wife. Don't blame it on your husband. Don't blame it on your children. It's you. Yes. I mean, devil can use a lot of circumstances. But again, I go back to it. God allows that to happen. Sometimes it's to test your faith, right? Mm -hmm. So God's going to allow it to happen. Then... If you, I, like I mentioned, Romans 8, 28, and we, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they call according to his purpose, then whether it's good or bad, you know, it's all good for me, then accept it as good for you. Only, don't accept only the goods as good for you. When good things happen, we're so happy to praise God. When bad things happen, we're so quick to blame God. But change that attitude. Amen. In your eyes, it's bad things, but years later, you look back and you say, man, that's the best thing that could ever happen to me. Because the Lord's in control. Yes. Right? And again, Galatians chapter 6, right? 7, 8. You read what you saw anyways. Right? right? Yeah. I mean, so there's no excuse. I mean, certain things happen in your life. It's because of you. Yes. 
certain things that happen in your life, it's always because of you. It doesn't matter. So stop blaming someone else. Stop blaming God. Stop blaming your family. Just get right. Just look at yourself in the mirror. You know what? I'm like this. Not because of anybody outside. It's because of you. Just blame the person that you see in the mirror. Always. Then you actually have a chance to get right with the Lord. Then when their persecution comes in your life, trials and hardships, you could actually defeat it. Because Bible says, what, James 4, 7, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Devil's going to always attack you as a Bible-believing Christian. And especially if you're going to do something for him, then you have to resist the devil. How are you going to resist the devil? By trusting God in every part of your life. Taking responsibility for who you are. Then, in conclusion, just look at your life. I mean, are you living by faith? Are you trusting God for every step of your way? Are you trusting God 24-7? Are you giving your hearts and minds and thoughts to the Lord so that he will help you to put it into action? Don't try to act before going to the Lord. A lot of times we fall into that trap. Devil's telling you, hey, you could do this, right? You have a lot of knowledge. You've been going to church. You've been saved for a while. You could do it. Man, you're better than him. You're better than her. You could do it. And then you fall into trap. And then you fall. And then it's hard to get up sometimes. But if you were that person in the past, but you could still get up. God's giving you another chance to get right with the Lord. That's it. I mean, one thing, best thing about our God is that even though you reap what you sow, I mean, that's given, but he will not remember anymore. Amen. If you truly confess your sins and get right with the Lord, Amen. right? You committed sins in the past. You're committing sins right now. Just get right with the Lord. Lord, Lord I want to live by faith. Yes. And I want to trust you every minute of a life, every second of my life. And the virtue that my moral and standard will be this. No matter what. Amen. And then my knowledge will come from this. No matter what, I'm going to grow in grace. Then you, know, you can live by faith. Then your mind is already like, I'm set. Bible is my final standard. Every thought, every step, Lord will lead it. I'm going to trust the Lord to help me make decisions. Yeah, don't do it on your own, right? And then I'm going to put it into action, Right? Yes. So don't just only think only, right? Now you say, okay, I'm going to trust the Lord every step of the way. I'm going to let him rule and give me wisdom for my thoughts. Then last step is what? You have to put into action. Lord's not going to show you everything. He'll show you one by one. Then you're going to live each day faithfully one by one. Each day you're going to walk by faith, not by sight, one by one. Then years later, if Lord tarries, you're going to look back today. You're going to look back yesterday. You're like, oh, that's what. And that's what living by faith meant to me. And I'm going to continue. Because one day, you won't need faith anymore. If you're saved, you'll see the finalization, finished work of your faith, which is Lord Jesus Christ. But don't you want to be found as a faithful servant? Yes. Thou good and faithful servant. In order to be found as a good and faithful servant, you have to be living by faith. Let's pray. Dear Father, many times we just forget the simplicity of living by faith, trusting you in all our ways, from our thoughts, everything to our actions. Help us not to fall into traps each day where we neglect you, we don't live by faith. We try to live by sight and not just trusting in you wholeheartedly, Lord God. Pray that the word of God will grow in knowledge of the word of God, grow in grace. Let it be the final authority no matter what. Let our morals and standards be aligned, found, be founded in the word of God, Lord. I pray that each person who has things to get right with you will get right with you today, Lord. And 
above all, Lord, you know, we want to live by faith because we want to give glory to you. Because you loved us so much, you died for us, Lord. And we do want to see you as soon as possible, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Bless the rest of the day and all the services. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.